eyewitness testimony is the evidence that you get from someone who has witnessed a crime. Instinctively, people tend to believe and rely on it to a great extent. It can be seen as a factor that can sway a judge and or jury to establish the guilt or innocence of a defendant. It is often used in the initial stages of an investigation, for example when a witness reports the perpetrator was of a certain appearance. Then the police will be looking for potential suspects who match that description. Witnesses' evidence is also used in court when either the prosecution or defense try to convince the jury that a certain person is or is not guilty. However, whilst in the past the criminal justice process has relied greatly on eyewitness accounts and still does, over the past few decades we have learned more and more about how unreliable this kind of evidence can be. It took DNA evidence to exonerate a number of innocent people who had been convicted based on eyewitness evidence. And mistakes made unwittingly by eyewitnesses are a substantial cause of wrongful convictions. It would be great if memory worked like a camera that records images, video and sound as they are and stores them safely in a drawer to be retrieved and replayed showing exactly how the situation happened. But that is not the case. There are many factors that influence how information is encoded into our memory and that can be a false representation at this stage already. In addition, with the passage of time, memories are likely to be altered even further. And then it also depends on the conditions under which a witness is required to retrieve and recount a memory, which might alter the original memory even further. Our brain cannot always distinguish between a memory of something that happened and something that we imagined. Also, memories can be unconsciously transferred, such that we believe that we saw a person in situation A, when really, we saw them in situation B. In general, but not always, the more certain a witness is of the accuracy of their testimony, the more likely it is to be correct. Research on memories has been taking place before the field of investigative psychology materialized. However, one feeds into the other. With a better understanding of how memory can be affected, investigative psychology can help avoid labeling witnesses or victims as unreliable when their true testimony is not clear or consistent and can also help avoid misleading them with bad interview techniques and questions. The cognitive interview has been developed to enable witnesses to recount more correct details without adversely affecting the memory's accuracy. Specialist courses exist that train the police in this technique. It involves making sure the witness is relaxed and under no time pressure. You need to create such an opportunity when you schedule your interview with them. Try to get them to reinstate as many aspects of the day you want to question them about as possible. Start by getting them to recount what they did that day. What was on their mind? How were they feeling? What was the weather like? What were they worried about or looking forward to that day? We call this context reinstatement. Then carry on asking about their perceptions as the narrative of their account moves closer to the incident in question. Be very careful not to make any suggestions that might alter their account. Go through the incident in this manner and ask open questions. Using sketch plans can allow a witness who is not comfortable mentally reinstating the context of the event to draw the layout of the event on paper and describe the incident using that drawing. It needs to be emphasized from the start of this interview that the witness should not leave out any detail, even if they think it might be trivial. This detail might actually trigger further information on the event. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this content useful. You can get access to each episode's transcript with key learning points, timestamps and references if you get yourself onto my mailing list. Just go to the main website on policesciencedoctor.com and on the bottom of each page you will find a sign-up form for notifications of new content. Just enter your first name, your preferred email address and the type of organization you work for. You will not get any spam, this is just for me to let you know about new content and for you to get access to all the transcripts. Thank you.